dichotomous keys. I think if I was to show most of you these four pictures and these four words, we could figure out which word went with which picture just by the characteristics of the bird in the picture. For instance, I'm sure most of us would know this one's a penguin, a duck, a parrot, and a cardinal. However, if I show you the same four pictures, but with their scientific names, would we be able to so easily identify which was which? This is one place where dichotomous keys can really come in and help us. Dichotomous keys are used to identify an unknown item. Uh, we can use it to figure out the scientific name of that item. A dichotomous key is really just a series of choices between two descriptions. So if you're trying to figure out an unknown, you'll have to decide which of the two descriptions fits your unknown. Some choices can be made by just looking at the unknown. For others, you might have to perform a test. Dichotomous keys can be created for many different things, but as I said before, we're going to be using them to find the scientific names of our unknowns. You might remember when we talked about scientific names a few weeks ago when we were discussing taxonomy. The scientific name is made up of two parts, the genus and the species. The genus is always capitalized, the species is not. Dichotomous keys can actually also come in several different formats. I'm going to show you two of the most common formats for examples today. For our first example today, we are going to try to find the scientific name of one of these four unknowns. We're going to choose just one for now. Let's go with C. We go to our first set of descriptions. It either has webbed feet or does not have webbed feet. Our unknown does not have webbed feet. If we follow the key, does not have webbed feet, it says go to three. So we're going to jump down to description three. Description three says, has a curved beak, does not have a curved beak. If I go back up here to my unknown, I can see that it does have a curved beak. Has a curved beak. That means this is the scientific name of our unknown. I am not asking you to be able to try and pronounce these. My only concern today is that you practice writing the scientific name. Here you can see C, scientific name, that was what we came up with. It's a blue and yellow macaw for the common name, which is also a parrot. For our last example, we have leaves. Again, we can pick any one of these to use as our example. We'll go with B. So, we go to our first description. Leaf is needle-like. If I look at B, it is not needle-like. So I would say no. The next description then says, has seven leaflets. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Has seven leaflets? Yes. Therefore, this is the scientific name of our unknown. Again, we can check right here. B, was that what we came up with? Yes. So, it is a white ash is the common name. This is how you use two different formats of the dichotomous key. I want to stress here that when you are using a dichotomous key, there is always only two choices. 